right guys, it's your girl T Speaks here and I am back with another video. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel so every time your girl drops some new heat, some new fire, you wanna become a hitter, click that subscribe button and that notification bell. Cause I'm telling you, I'm dropping these story times back to back to back to back. We already on part two. If you've already missed part one, you need to stop. Wait a minute, hold my cup, put some liquor in it. Nah, I'm just saying. Y'all need to go definitely watch part one. Part two is here and now. If you've seen the title, I know you guys are going to enjoy this because you definitely enjoyed part one. I told you guys it's a series and we're going to keep it going now. So part two, I know you've already seen the title. And um, yeah, let's get right into it. I'm not going to hold you for long. As part one, I do have my nice little cup here, my Golden Girls cup. If you're a fan, if you know, you know. The girls that know, no. Anyway. I have a little Cavassier, a little Coke in there because this situation, this story will drive anyone to drink, okay? So I have to have me a little cup here. So if you see me sipping on my cup, <laughs> just know it's about to get juicier. So, okay, we already did part one. I'm not going to do a recap. I'm not going to do any of that because you can always go back to part one. And I'll probably link it somewhere so that you can go back and check that out if you did miss it. Part two, part two, part two. Let's see, part two. Um, part two started about a month after the fiasco from part one. So part two comes. It's a Monday morning. It is about 7 a.m. on a Monday morning. Your girl is dressed at home. Excuse me. I'm at home, dressed, ready to go to work, ready to start my day, ready to get things popping. I told y'all. Anyway, so... I'm dressed. I'm giving myself about like an hour or so to get to work because I was about 45 minutes away to an hour from my job. Um, which is a little bit of a little bit of a drive, but I didn't mind. So, um, like I said, I got dressed. I had my little lunchbox ready. Your girl was trying to be adult, an adult, excuse me. So I had my, you know, my clothes ready, dressed, walked downstairs. Now, typically, what I do or what I used to do. Um, Whenever I would come downstairs, because I was um, going through, the, I had to get on the elevator, so I would come downstairs, I would walk through the lobby. As soon as I hit that lobby, and I opened the lobby doors, I would always press my remote key. I don't know why, I just did. I just pressed it just to, just to always know that, hey, your, your car is out there, girl. Your car, boop, boop, oh, that's just me. That's my car. That car, I did name her. Her name was Sasha. So, Sasha was a, let me see. This was around 2003, no, not 2003, 2013, 2012, somewhere around that time. Like I said, I don't remember the exact year, but um, this was a, my 2008 Nissan Altima SL. I loved it. This was my second car. Um, at that point, I was just a Nissan only girl, uh, so I loved that car. That was my biggest accomplishment at that time, and it was my first car with payments and everything, so your girl was, you know... <laughs> I was doing my thing so like I said back back to me walking out my lobby doors from where my um my condo was so I'm walking out I'm always pressing the button and I don't hear the I don't hear the normal boop boop so I'm like okay whatever you know maybe, maybe whatever maybe I'm a little too far away you know maybe it's early maybe because I'm not a morning person maybe I need to have me some coffee maybe I can hear better so I didn't pay any mind and I park um in this specific complex that I lived at first of all it was gated it was a gated um condo complex and it was assigned parking so um I always parked in the same spot every single day for as long as I lived there because that was my assigned parking now I open the doors I walk out of the building area in the carport and I look over to where my car's parked because I can see Typically, I can see where my car's parked from where I was standing. I look out. I don't see my car. I'm like, hold on. Wait a guy. Wait a damn minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. So then I'm like, hmm. I last showed my car yesterday, and I remember parking it there. But maybe, maybe I did something different. Maybe I didn't park it. Let me just scan the whole parking lot because this is a huge parking lot. It was a parking lot 
um, that housed um, enough parking spaces for about four to five buildings. So it was a pretty nice size parking lot and I would be able to see if I parked somewhere else just, you know. I know I didn't, but you know how you gotta like, okay, maybe let me, let me, let me think about this. Maybe I'll park somewhere else. So I'm looking, looking. Where the hell is my car? I'm pressing the button. Where the hell is my car? Oh, hell no. So I stood there for a moment. I don't know why, but I just stood there like, hmm, my car's not here. Where the hell could my car be? So my first reaction was because the, um, the condo complex was ran by an HOA and sometimes they could be a little, you know, you know how those HOAs get or those a little snooty apartment complex, um, you know, board of directors get, they'll tow your car. So I'm like, well, maybe they towed my car. Um, cause I know, I remember recent, recently they had changed our parking decals cause we had to, for some reason we had to get parking decals and we had never had them before. So I'm like, okay, maybe they didn't see my parking decal or something. So let me go up here and get some regulation going on at the freaking apartment complex. So I will, no, I don't walk. Your girl stumps. I stump. Mind you, I have my flats on too. Your girl stump all the way to the freaking office where, you know, the directors are, the HOA, all that stuff. So I'm mad as hell. Mind you, I got my purse in one hand, my lunchbox in the other, my keys still in my hand. Because I'm like, I know damn well they didn't tow my car. They better go get my car today and right now because I got to go to work. I don't have time for this. So I finally get to um, the office. I'm a little bit out of breath at that point because I not only was it a little bit of a walk, but I'm mad. I'm angry. My adrenaline's pumping. I'm pissed. I didn't walk. I stumped. Fee, five, four, fum. Stumped. Okay? Stomp all the way to the office. Got to the office. I didn't open the door like a normal person. Your girl opened it. I swung that damn. I swung that door open. I tried to take it off the hinges. I was like, I know y'all didn't try. I know you didn't just try me and tow my damn car. So I get in there and um, there's an older guy and an older lady there. And so I walk in. They can see it on my face. I am pissed. I am angry. They're like, hi, how can we help you? How can you help me? Where's my car? You guys told my car last night it's not here. I got to go to work. I don't have time for this. So the lady go looks over to the guy. He's at his table. She's at her table. She just calls over to him. She's like, hey, I don't know what his name was. I'll just make up a name for it because it's not that. They, after this scene, we don't talk about them anymore. So I name him Bud. Hey, Bud. He's old and grumpy. Yeah. What do you want? Did we tow any cars last night? Tow any cars? Uh, I don't think so. Mind you, I'm huffing, I'm puffing, I'm pissed off. And he has the, the fact I could feel his attitude through just the way that he's talking, it's fueling my anger even more. So I'm standing here like this. Where's the car? So he's moving all slow. He looks through his little book. Let me see. Let me see. Give me a minute. Goes through, looks at his little paperwork. Now I don't see that a car was towed. And I'm like, at that point, I'm like, I'm seeing colors. Like I'm seeing the rainbow flutter around in my head. Like, you know, like when you go to those clubs, those like, um, rave type clubs that you see on TV and you see the flashing different color lights just boom boom you hear the music boom 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 and then you see the lights just flashing that's what I'm seeing and I'm like well they didn't tow my car hmm did I make my car payment on time cuz mind you this was my first car and now you know this is my, not my first car excuse me this was my first car with payments um so you know I second guess myself I'm like okay well maybe I didn't Maybe I didn't, let me check. Let me check. Cause I might be snapping for no reason. So I um, stomped the hell up out of there with my purse and my lunchbox in tow. I stomp back to my um, my condo, my unit, and I get up, so I get up there. I was, I know I was mad because I did not even take the elevator. The elevator would have taken too long. I was on the fifth floor. I was on the fifth floor. And um, I ended up taking the stairs. And mind you, I'm stomping up each stair. Fee, five, four, from. I finally get 
to um, the fifth floor, top floor of the building. I'm out of breath. I'm mad. And you know when you're upset, it takes a lot out of you anyway. So not only am I mad, but I'm out of breath and tired because I didn't stomp all these stairs and I didn't walk through all this, this parking lot. I still don't have my car. I have to go to work. I have to be at work. So I get to my apartment. I, I remember looking up, looking for my um my car payment. You know your little car payment notice, notice that they send you every month to let you know your car payment is due. So I look for that. I find that so I can get their phone number. And I know I'll be able to reference my account number and everything else once I get that paper. So I found the paper, did a couple of fumbling, lumbling, found the paper, and I called them. Um, I remember being on hold for a minute and I was like, God darn it, why am I still, what is going on? As much as I pay y'all a month and I'm on hold, how dare you, how rude. Um, <laughs> so they finally answered the phone and um, I had an attitude. I'm not gonna say I didn't, I had an attitude. And I think it was, um, so I remember the lady answered the phone, you know, hello, I think it, I remember it was, I think it was, ooh, GM Financial, I think it was GM Financial. But anyway, it's not that big of a deal. Who was? But I remember. Hi, this is so and so from GM Financial. How can I help you? Y'all got my car. I'm at this time. I'm like maybe 22, 23. I know how to be professional. I know how to use my professional voice. But at that time, I didn't give a damn about my professional voice. I y'all got my car. I need it. I got to get to work. Okay. I don't have time for this. I don't have time. So um. <laughs> So the lady's like, well, ma'am, you know, what's your first and last name? I gave her my first and last name, last for my social, account number, all of that. I have to confirm my address, to confirm the car, all this foolishness. And she's like, okay, give me a minute. So you know how they're typing. And they're typing. And it felt like she was typing forever. Like for freaking ever. Like it was just, oh. It took forever. It probably really didn't in real life, but in my mind, it took forever. And I'm like, what the hell is she typing? Is she type retyping the Bible? Is she retyping the Bible? I got to go. So she finally um, finds my account or whatever. And she's like, no, um, I don't see that we came in, you know, repossessed your vehicle. And I was like, well, my car is not here. I went to the condo uh, place and, you know, the office. And they told me that they don't have it. They didn't tow it. I figured you guys got it. And she, she's like, no, we don't have it. She's like, ma'am your car is stolen you probably want to call the police and i was like it didn't dawn on me the first like i don't know it just i was like silent for two seconds i'm like oh shoot my car is really stolen okay ma'am i gotta go bye bye thank you bye hang up the phone with her and um <clears throat> hang up the phone with her i call the police i call a non-emergency number mind you at this time i was used to calling a non-emergency number because of what has happened in part one um so i called a non-emergency number i told them hey i came out to go to work this morning my vehicle is gone i gave them a description of my vehicle gave them my address they said they'll send an officer out real quick phone call maybe five minutes tops um so that was that so i remember calling I think I, I don't remember if I called or text my dad because at that time I was under his car insurance and um, I told him, hey, you know, I think I don't remember if it was a call or a text, but I remember telling him, you know, the situation, hey, I woke up, my car is gone and he was like, um, well, you have insurance on it, call the police, let them know and, um, you know, we'll figure out the insurance part later, but you do have insurance on it. So don't worry. I'm like, okay, cool. Um... I remember texting my cousin. I text my cousin as well. Mind you, he's in a different, he's on a different side of the world, not the world, <laughs> different side of the country. So he's on a different time zone. So it's probably in the wee early hours in the morning over there to him, but I still had to text him to let him know. So um, the police finally come and I believe I was already out. No, I was not outside. So I remember, I remember getting a call on my phone from like a block number and um the police were outside no i'm sorry i jumped the gun no no so after i text my dad and my cousin something in my head said hold on you have your key but you also had another key in my head my common sense kicked in oh guess who has the other key to your car i don't remember what i named him in the first um 
No, I do. Okay, I remember, I remember now. Fred. I'm like, you gave Fred the spare key to your car. Because at one point, I would um take the, what's the, we call it here the tri-rail. It's like a little train, subway, stay, subway situation. I, I would take it sometimes so I could save on gas and save on wear and tear of my car. And I would park it in the parking lot and I would take it, and I would, you know, take that, the tri-rail to work <clears throat> and take it back home. And then, you know, sometimes he would, you know, need to use my car because at that time he did not have a car yet. So me being stupid, I'm letting him, you know, borrow the car. Once he's finished borrowing it, bring it back to the tri-rail station. So by the time I get off work, I'll be able to get my car or he'll just come pick me up from the tri-rail station once I get off work. Stupid, I know. First and last, never again, baby, never. I would never. Anyway, young and dumb. So, um, I thought about it, I was like, oh, homeboy got, homeboy has my keys. And then I immediately, I said, oh, he got my damn car. He got my car. Let me call him. Where my phone at? I don't even know my phone at. I'm gonna use, use this. Where my phone at? Let me call him. So I call him on his main phone number no answer, go straight to voicemail. I'm like, oh hell no. Oh hell no. So I call on another another number because mind you, piggybacking off of part one, after um, everything occurred the way it occurred, he had started calling and texting my phone from a different number. And I remember he would alternate back and forth between those numbers. So I called the other number. It was a local number. So I called that number, no answer. I called that phone, my phone, I had an iPhone at the time, my phone showed I called 64 times. 64, six, four. I had never called anybody 64 times in my life. I called him 64 times. So mind you, while I'm still calling, 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 I get the call from an unknown number. I'm answering it thinking it's him, it ended up being um, the officer. He was downstairs, um, and he wanted me to come downstairs so we can talk and discuss what happened. Mind you, I'm still pissed off, so I didn't even take the elevator. I run down the five flights of stairs. So I go downstairs. I have my purse with me, and I think I still have my lunchbox in hand because I'm thinking this is something quick. You know, it'll be figured out. You know, whatever. So the officer comes out. I don't remember his name. I remember what he looked like, though. He looked like Carl Winslow. He looked like Carl Winslow. Anyway, so he gets down there. It was It's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. Because at first I was like, who is this Carl Winslow looking mother? It wasn't his fault. I shouldn't be mad, but you know, it is what it is. So anyway, I get downstairs and um, tell him what happened. Hey, somebody took my car. Da, 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 da. And first thing he asked me. Was the last time you saw the car, I was like, oh, I saw it yesterday. I drove it to wherever I went. I parked it here. I have a sign parking. I know where I parked. You know, just being a little facetious, just being a little smart ass, just because I was already angry and he was asking obvious questions that he needed to know, but I was just pissed off. So, um, he asked me, well, how many keys do you have to the car? I said, well, I had, I had to, um, I had to I have one here he said where was the other one I said well my boyfriend at the not even my boyfriend he wasn't even my boyfriend we were done after part one but he still had my key I told him you know a slight story of part one of what happened between him and I and I said hey you know this is what happened he still has my key I haven't seen him since I haven't talked to him since so he asked, okay, well, what's his name? I give him his name, date of birth, whatever. Um, I give him that information and then he says, you know, he looks around to see if there's any cameras, which there was cameras there. Unfortunately, the camera footage was crap. I don't even think it worked. It might've just been fake cameras sitting there. Anyway, he goes to, you know, fill out his report. He comes back out of his car from filling out his report and he gives me this form to fill out. And he's like, well, um, you know, at this point, we're kind of narrowing it down to he probably took the car because who else would come into the neighborhood, take one car, nobody else reporting the car being missing. It's a gated community. Who got in here to get this car? It's like the math wasn't mathing. So we're like, yeah, he probably took it. 
So the officer's like, well, um, are you going to, here's the, the, the million dollar question. The million dollar question. Are you going to press charges? Now, mind you, me, 32 year old me today. Hell yes, I want to press charges. Absolutely. I don't have to think about it. Me, 22, 23 years old, I, I was like, well, hmm, I mean, he already, let me give you a little background on him. Like I said, if you haven't seen another video, long story short, he was my age and he was addicted to heroin. So he had a bad heroin addiction. Um, and I still at some point felt sorry for him because I'm like, you know, he took my car, but maybe, you know, he didn't have anywhere to stay. And, you know, I'm thinking this in my head, like trying to sympathize. Like he, you know, he has a real problem. You know, his family's not really dealing with him. Nobody's really there to help him. I know he has this drug issue. We've clearly, we've clearly seen what it can do to you from part one of my story. And, um, you know, it's just... I'm like, I don't really want to get him in trouble. I don't really want him to go to jail. I really just would rather him get help. Mind you, this is all in my head. So I'm sitting there quiet, and the officer's just standing there looking at me like, yes or no? What are we doing? So I was at first I said, mm, no, I don't, I don't want to. I just want my car. I just want my car so I can get to work. You know, I really, I don't play about my job. That's one thing. Let me just give you a sign. I don't play about work. When I need to be to work, I'm there. I don't play about work at all. And that situation just made me, it made me more upset because I was missing out on work and I was going to be late. And I was never late and I was always there. Fast forward back to the story. So the officer looked at me. He's like, well, you know, what did he say? It was this long little lecture he gave me about you know well you need to press charges because this isn't right this isn't okay if you don't press charges he's going to continue to do things like this blah 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 and you know what's right is right what's wrong is wrong you need your car you work hard for it and it made me it was like a little dad moment he was giving me so i was like you're right you're right you're right you're right i definitely i want to press charges so um yeah so i was like you know what i'm gonna press charges so i feel like paperwork little affidavit and everything um, so that I can press charges. Uh, he gave me like this little case card with the case number on it and he left. He's like, you know, if, you know, if we find it, we'll let you know. Otherwise, you know, we're done here. So I was like, okay, cool. Lord, you know, mind you, I'm still like stunned and I have this empty, it, it was the most emptiest feeling I've ever had. Somebody taking something from you. Mind you, I was so, when I first got that car, I was so proud of that car. I just loved it. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing big things. I work. I got my own place. And I got a car, and it's a nice car. It ain't no little pair to pat Flintstone car. You got to put your feet out to stop it. No, baby, this is a car, car. This is Sasha. This is Sasha Fierce. Um, so I was like, I felt this empty, the emptiest feeling ever. So I was like, okay, well, I guess now I just got to go back up to my house. So... I remember going back up to the house and um i remember what did i do first i'm trying to remember did i call so i call, I remember calling my dad telling him the situation i didn't necessarily tell him that i thought that fred stole the car i just kind of left that little piece out a little bit um i left it out but i kind of hinted at it so I'm like, well, I do have another key, but Fred has it, blah, blah, blah. So I remember us calling the insurance. I think it was Geico at the time. Calling the insurance company and the insurance company, you know, made the claim, took my, you know, information, police report, things like that. So then um, my dad was like, okay, well, you know, she needs a rental car. She needs to get to work, blah, blah, blah. At the time, I don't know if that's still their policy, but at the time, they didn't give out rental cars until the car was missing for 72 hours i don't it's not making sense but my, i remember my dad snapping what i pay you guys every month how dare you not get for a rental it's on the policy you're gonna pay for the car if it don't come back she needs her car she needs a rental she needs to get to work and i'm just sitting there on the phone like yeah you tell me that because i'm so 
all over the place at this point. I don't even know. I don't have nothing to say. I'm just like, you know. So, you know, we ended the call there because there was really nothing you could do. You could scream and yell all day, but it wasn't changing their policy. So we just had to leave it at that. So I got off the phone with my dad. I remember calling my cousin. And my cousin was like, are you okay? You know, just trying to calm me down and keep me, you know, sane. And he was like, well, I'm, I'm honestly, because he's thinking business-wise. He's like, honestly, he did you a favor. Let's hope they don't bring that. Let's hope they don't find a car. Because if they don't find a car, they can pay this car off and you can get you another one. Because you have insurance. And I'm like, no, I want my car. Like, what are you talking about? I want my car. I want my car. I want my car. Mind you, I hadn't, I didn't know a lot about, um, the whole insurance thing and buying another I knew nothing about it so it really didn't make sense to me as an adult now it makes plenty of sense like okay you stole it I got insurance I'm gonna get another one whatever um go on to the next one but um so I ended the call with him it was a real quick call just you know for him to calm me down and just say hey you know it's cool you got insurance don't worry about it so then the next call I made was to my boss I called my boss and told her what happened. Now, mind you, my boss was well aware as to what happened with the previous story with the kidnapping. So my boss found her and I told her she was pissed, just as pissed as I was. She was like, what? I cannot. She has, she was um, of Hispanic um, background. So she had, the, you know, the, the accent. And I think she was Cuban. I think she was Cuban. It don't matter. She had an accent. Um, not too heavy, not too light. Just like kind of in the middle. I cannot believe this. I can't believe he would do this to you. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm so sorry. You know, she was super sympathetic. And I was like, you know, they, then the insurance company, I was like, to top it off, the insurance company is saying, you know, I won't get a rental car until 72 hours. So she's like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Take care of your business. You can come into work when you come into work. It'll be fine. It'll work. will be here when you get back. That's the kind of bosses you need, people. Those are the kind of managers that we need in the world. Anyway, um... So I remember just like sitting there. I just sat on the, I remember just sitting on the bed. Just I was like, oh, what else do I do? I'm never home in the middle of the day. I don't know what to do. So I sat on the bed and I just kind of watched TV. Um, I called him a couple more times. I don't know how many more, but I'm sure it's in the double digits. Okay, I'm sure it's in the double digits. Um, so I kept calling, kept calling, no answer. The next day comes around, still no car. Still no phone, no number, no, no text or callbacks from this, from Fred. Um, and I'm just like, I didn't know what to do. So then once the 72 hour mark came about, um, I called Geico back and, um, you know, said, hey, you know, I haven't, 72 hours, I need a rental, I need to get to work. So I think I took a cab, no, was it a cab? Did I take a cab? I think I took a cab. I think I took a cab over to Enterprise and I went to Enterprise, my local Enterprise, and I got a, you know, went in there, gave them my information, paid my, de my, my deposit and all that, and kind of told them like, yeah, man, my car got stolen, I need a rental, whatever, and I was like, but don't put me in nothing, don't put me in nothing, crappy, I don't want to be in no crappy car. And I think they put me in a, what was the car they put me in? A Chrysler 200, a black Chrysler 200. Now this was way newer than my car, so I really didn't know how to act then. Baby, I really didn't know how to act then. I had never drove, you know, a newer, newer car. Like, I only drove my car and my first car, which is like a 97 Sentra. Baby, I was in a, the same year car. I didn't know how to act. Mind you, I had to drive from, from where I live to work, which was about 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm driving. I'm like, ooh. I'm driving, I still want my car, but I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm speeding, weaving, ah, ah, I still want my car, but ah, ah, I still want my car. Anyway, <laughs> so I ended up driving the car. Um, I drove that car, this was around, let me set back, go back to the time setting. So this was, I remember this was right before Thanksgiving, so maybe like a two weeks or so before Thanksgiving. Two to three weeks before Thanksgiving, November. So it was a little chilly outside, but I'm still riding, I'm chilling. So, um, mind you, I ended up looking at the police report so long, I ended up kept looking at my license plate number. So I kept looking at my license plate number, I got until I, I memorized it. 
So I memorized it. Um, I don't have the same license plate number. I'm not even going to say it, but I, you know, I had it memorized. It was three letter, three numbers, three letters. I had it memorized. So everywhere I was going for about a good week in my rental, I'm driving around and running like it's mine. Every time I saw a silver Nissan Altima, I was like, oh, there's my car. There's my damn car. There's my car. And I would check the license plate, I would follow it, check the license plate, and no, okay, that ain't, that ain't my car, that ain't my car. Oh, damn, I got my car. Oh, no, nah, that ain't my car, that ain't my car. Um, I even rode around some of the little hangout spots that I knew Fred would hang out at to see if maybe I saw my car. I would randomly just go riding around looking for my car. Not having an idea or, idea or clue where to go, but I was just riding around because I figured he was somewhere locally in my car. Let me get my drink. Cause we got, we almost done, we almost done. Hold tight, hold tight. Okay, so a week goes by. The car was stolen Monday. I get a call Sunday night on unknown block number. So I answer the phone cause mind you, I have to keep my phone close by because I don't know, you know, anything can happen, so much going on anything can happen and my family's calling constantly to check on me because of the sequence of events that has gone on thus far so i get a call it's about 9 30 10 o'clock i'm just sitting at home chilling watching tv and i get this call ring 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 so i answer my phone hello hey this is officer such and such we found your car silence what it's not my car oh for real she where y'all at? Where y'all at? Now we went into beast mode. Where y'all? Okay, what's so where? Over on the corner of uh, Avenue A and Street B. Okay, cool. I'll be there. Bet I'll be there. Um, do you have somebody that'll be able to drop? Don't worry about it. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. Cause in my head I'm thinking. In my head I'm thinking. Oh, they got my car. He's out there. They've arrested him. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking they've arrested him. He's sitting out. He's sitting outside on the ground. This is in my head. He's sitting outside on the ground in handcuffs. My car is sitting there and they're waiting on me to come and get my car. This, now the city that, it was in a different city for me. So from me, this was, this city was about, it's about maybe 10 to 15 minutes away. It's not that far away. Um, so I'll jump, I remember calling some of my friends, friends slash coworkers at the time. Y'all know who y'all are. Some of them I don't talk to no more, but so I called them and just let them know. I sent them texts, you know, hey, yes, I'm coming to car, I'm coming to get it. It didn't dawn on me that I needed somebody else to drive this car because I couldn't drive two cars at one time. I was just so excited to get there because I want to see him and face him because I already had in my mind, oh, I'm finna, I'm finna knock his behind out. Mind you, I'm a little bigger now. Still cute though. <laughs> but um, homeboy was about 226 too. I'm 5'11". At that time, I'm probably 160, 165. But in my mind, I was a giant. I was Andre the Giant. And I was going to walk up and I was going to... I didn't care if the police was there or not. I was going... I was going... So, um, I get in and jump in the car. And I call my cousin. And I tell him, I'm like, hey, um, you know, they found my car. They found my car. I'm on my way to go get my car. He's like, okay, cool. All right. So, you know, on his end, he's like, okay, go ahead and go over there. Head over there. Da, 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 da. Just kind of calming me, coaching me. I was like, if he's there, I'm going to beat him up. If he's there, I'm going to knock him out. I don't care what, I don't care the police there. Not. I'm going to knock him out. I'm going to knock him out. So I finally get there after riding around in a circle, 10 to 15 minutes. Because mind you, the area where it was, this place is a known junkie drug area. It's not the safest neighborhood. Um, everybody in this city in my city and the surrounding cities no if you're in this specific city i'm not gonna say the city name if you're in this specific city and the streets are all named alphabetically you're in the hood and i don't have a problem with the hood but this is not just the regular hood this is junkie area now if you don't know florida is one of the largest states that takes um the for rehab for drug rehab so we get a lot of the junkies out of there a lot a lot so i rode around for maybe 30 minutes because i got lost i couldn't figure out where i was going 
my adrenaline running. I'm not familiar with the area. I'm on the phone, you know. So then I get another call from the police officer. He's like, hey, are you still on your way? You know, we're still out here. I was like, yes, sir. I'm coming, I'm coming. Don't leave. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. So I finally, maybe six minutes after that, I find it. Mind you, I had a GPS going, but y'all know how the GPSs are sometimes. They just don't. They don't do what they need to do. They don't give what they're supposed to get. So I finally get there. I finally pull up. I pull up fast. I pull up like a beat, like a bat of hell. Not remembering, you're meeting the, with the police officer. The police is going to be there. Why are you driving like this? I didn't give a damn. Arr! Oh, that's my car right there. Arr! I said, hold on. This is not my car. From behind, I'm like, this ain't my car. And I see the tag, I'm like, oh, this is my car. Let me tell you why the nigga this is my car. Give me a second. First off, I didn't see him out there. I didn't see anybody up there. I just saw the officer who pulled the car over. So the reason why I didn't notice my car is because uh, my car had tin on it. I had never put tin on it because I was too cheap to buy it. I'm just going to be straight up with you. I was too cheap to buy it. I never I had plans to eventually get tin on my windows, but I never did it. So I was just being cheap. My car had tin on it. In South Florida, it's a big thing to get tint on your cars because it's hot, you know, the sun, whatever. Tint. You have to get tint. It's normal. But this was like dark, dark. It was definitely legal tint. At least 5% tint all over the car. So I pull up. So that's like, like I said, when I pull up, I'm like, this is not my car. Then I look at the tag. Because remember, I remember I my tag number. Oh, this is my car. I get out. I jump out of the car. Like a, I'll jump out of the car. Like I'm ready. Like where he at? Like in my, I'm, I think I told the officer, well, where he at? Where he at? Who took it? Who took it? Where he at? Because I knew in my head it was Fred. And I was ready to just... Um, so... <laughs> they said, oh, well, we took the person in, the driver in. We already took him in, you know, booked him or whatever. We just got to get this car out of the road. And, um, you know, we're done. So he's like, do you have someone else to drive the car for you? Drive the other car for you? And I was like, no. You know, I didn't think of that. I didn't think that far out. I just need to get my car. So he's like, okay, cool, no worries. So what we'll do is um, you drive your car. I'll drive the, my police uh, cruiser. We'll drive over. You can park in the police station parking lot. You can leave it there. Drive the rental back home. And when you get a chance, you can come back and get your car when you have somebody else. I'm like, okay, cool. That works. Now I'm getting in my car. It's making it to be my car. Tent on the windows car seat in the back mind you i don't have children I, to this day i don't have children i didn't have children then car is a car seat in the back there's shoes there's clothes there's change all over the place there's um black i can't forget the black ice car air freshener um they had sprayed some kind of weird i don't know it's probably was smoking you know that stuff in my car um it was filthy and um i had this tin on here this dark 5% 10 on my car so and it was just I felt so violated I felt so dirty I felt just disgusting driving my own car and you know I drove it over to the police station and you know parked it where he said he was going to park it but it didn't dawn on me again when he was like oh drop your car off and, uh, and I'll bring you back what what you mean oh yeah he brought me back but due to policy, I had to ride in the back seat of the police car. Never in my life have I rode in the back of the police car. But I did that night. So let me let me set the scene for you. So I parked my car in the parking lot. It's easy, easily accessible. I can come back and get it the next day. I have my keys, lock the doors, because we don't, you know, wanted to get stolen again. Um and what let me see. So, okay, so yeah, I get in the car, he opens the opens the door, he's like, this is not going to be, this is going to be probably a pretty uncomfortable ride. And I was like, yeah, um, I'm sure it is. He opens the door, I sit in the seat. The seats were like bench seats, like the, when you go to the fair and they have a specific seat where your butt actually is implant, imprinted in them, if that makes sense, those hard benches. So it was like literally for one or two or three people, you would have to sit there because the way they were made you can't sit anywhere else so i sit on it and they're hard as hell hard as rocks um so he closes the door the way he when he closed the door it was just like somebody closing 
the doors to jail because I felt like I was in jail. In front of me is some, 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 some bars. The windows have bars. The doors don't have handles, so I cannot open the door from the inside. Um, I didn't even put my seatbelt on because I didn't want to be in there. Mind you, thankfully, where the rental car was, it was less than a five-minute ride. He was driving like a bat of hell. I was sliding all around from side to side, but I, I'm doing like this because I don't want to touch nothing because I know it's disgusting. I just felt dirty. It, I know it was nasty and dirty. And um, it's quiet. You know, I'm not saying anything. He's not saying anything. Just you can hear his radio. Yep, roger that. <laughs> beep, beep. Roger that. Beep, beep. Yeah, I got a 1080 on 4th four, Street. Yeah, beep, beep. That's all I hear. I'm like, Lord, please let me get the hell out of this car. Please, please, please. So we finally pull up back to where my car, my rental car was. He has to get out and open the door for me. And I asked him, okay, so what happened? So what's next? And he was like, he didn't tell me who was driving the car. He's like, yeah, um, well, you know, there was a drug, there was a known drug dealer driving the vehicle. Um, I saw the, I saw him followed him for a while because I was pulling him over because the tents were too dark and I guess he realized I was following him he pulled over I pulled up behind him ran the tag realized it was stolen and I'm like hmm okay so when I get in the car I do a little bit more looking around mind you I'm in door the door is closed and locked because this is still the hood um I see a bill of sale in my car Mind you, I haven't signed no damn bill of sale for nothing. First of all, I had payments on the car. Second, uh, hell no. So whoever this person that was that was driving my vehicle had signed, it was not Fred, had signed their full name and had this whole thing printed up of a bill of sale. I was like, hmm, okay. Um, there was like some random like prepaid debit cards in there and an ID like a little trap phone so I eventually looked up the guy's name who was on the ID and it came to find out he was the one all right guys battery overheated anyway so I end up looking the guy up um, who left his ID in my car and turns out he had a record a mile long known well-known drug dealer so this fool basically sold my car to a drug dealer for drugs specifically heroin who does heroin at 25 26 years old like it's not making sense to me i don't know i don't know i don't know anyway by the time i got home got home calmed down adrenaline went down i was mad because i didn't i didn't get a chance to like i really wanted to just want to um but anyway so i got home the next day i woke up and i did like a quick a little assessment of my car some little minor dents and dings damages and um i got that damn car so I got my car and all the dirty clothes and shoes and all that mess about my car baby got it detailed i took it over um to guy called let them write an estimate got my car fixed and um they i don't even think they end up charging the dude with stealing my car um i don't know that's the justice system for you but i did get my car back um the dude ended up getting like charges for like having drugs on him or something while he was in the car but he didn't really get arrested for my car um the whole time until you know even me getting my car back i didn't hear anything from fred still mia still out there acting like pookie on them drugs and things but you know i was happy to get my car back i got it fixed with my insurance and i was able to move along run along this wasn't the end of course this is a series this wasn't the end of this situation with old fred old fred shows up in a different way um that's gonna be part three of the series the next video make sure y'all tune in make sure you subscribe to my channel hit that notification bell so every time i drop some new Parts to this whole fiasco, this little lifetime story, y'all be one of the first ones to know. I know y'all tired because I'm tired, but imagine going through it. I know y'all didn't heard about y'all like, well, dang, girl, this is not it. There's a couple more parts to go. It gets a little bit more stickier in the next couple parts. But um, yeah, my car got stolen, got recovered, got repaired. Fred's still missing. But part three gets a little bit more juicy, a little bit more interesting. 
we add a couple more people into the scenario. I'm not going to, I ain't going to give y'all too much because then y'all not going to turn, tune in. But baby, it gets a little Jerry, Jerry Springer, Mari-esque. Stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate everything. I appreciate all the support. I love you guys so much. Um, not only is this entertaining for you, but it's therapeutic to me. So again, I appreciate you for watching. I'm going to finish this cabassier. It's Friday night. I'm going <laughs> to go out to somebody's bar after I finish this. Because, baby, I need it. Okay? And uh, <laughs> my car won't get stolen. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Love you. Stay tuned. Part three is coming up soon. Tune in. Bye.